Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm here to introduce you to set building in Frameforge Previs. Whenever we talk about a set, we're talking about the immediate surrounding environment of the location in which you're shooting. Set construction is that process by which a set designer works in collaboration with the director of production to create the set for a theatrical film or television production. I like to think of a set as being comprised of four elements. Number one, environments inside or outside. Number two, structure. Buildings, trees, clouds, topography, walls, doors, floors. Number three, dressing elements. Tables, desks, computers, phones, weapons, whatever. Number four, actors. Humans or animals in some cases, where the storyboards focus. In this tutorial, part one of two, I'm gonna go over the mechanics of set building in Frameforge Previs. I'm not gonna show you how to build a specific type of set. We'll save that for another day. Instead, I'll be going over the tools within Frameforge Previs that allow you to build your own set from scratch or quickly and easily stand up a pre-made set for quick and dirty pre-visualization. You've probably seen mention of the room builder functionality in the dialog box that appears whenever you start Frameforge Previs. I'm going to hold off on discussing that functionality until the second part of this series on set building. You've also probably noticed that the initial set that's displayed when you start a new previous file is this infinite green grassy field and a clear blue sky. Since real life is not always like that, changing this is no problem. If you click on the sets drop down menu, you'll see an option for edit set parameters. Click on that and you're presented with a menu that allows you to specify the environment you envision for your set. Yours should look like this, however exact values could be different. At the top left is a field where you can enter a name for your set. Don't blow this off, because the application is going to use this in a number of different ways to help you. And as you'll see later on, you can have multiple sets within one previous file. And when trying to flip-flop back and forth in between those, and they have names like unnamed set number one, you're going to get a bit of a headache. So save yourself some stress down the road, give your set a good name. In the center here is a rendering of the dome of the sky over the ground. To change the color or texture of either of them, look to this right panel. To change the sky, make sure the sky settings radio button is checked. Click the remove texture button. Either apply a solid color or a new texture as desired. The application comes with a number of pre-made sky textures for you to choose from. In a similar fashion, you can change the ground texture. Make sure the ground settings radio button is first selected. Unlike the sky, which is typically a texture applied once to the entire sky, ground is generally a small texture which is repeated or tiled numerous times. To set how many times the floor texture is repeated, simply drag this repeat texture slider until you're happy with how it looks. You can change it from this grass to carpet or bricks or pavement, whatever you'd like. You can also place an inset floor onto the middle of the set, which allows you to put a single location texture on your set. We'll talk more about inset floors in part two of this tutorial when we discuss Room Builder. Very briefly, let's kind of go over that one more time. A little demonstration. I'm going to start a new set. I'm going to choose a sky texture, blue sky, and fluffy white clouds for my ground texture. I'm going to choose this sandy with pebbles looking texture. I'm going to tile it 24 times. Yeah, that looks good. What I had in mind was this dry lake bed in the desert. Doesn't look like much right now, but let's add some actors. Let's add some props. Bingo. All right, now I have my classic Las Vegas mobsters. Uh, something bad is going down in the desert kind of scene. Yeah, it's not looking good for this bald guy. Brainforge Previs even comes with a few pre-made sets. The exterior set, the house set, and the office set. Each have their own subsets as well. Click on the sets drop-down menu and then hover your mouse over import sets from. When the submenu opens up, choose Previs project slash set collection. An open file window should appear. Drill down into set collections. You should see the ones I just mentioned. In this menu, you can choose from the subsets over on the left.
and you have a top-down blueprint view over here on the right. You can choose one or all to import. Once you've checked them off, hit this button and you've imported them into your previous file. To actually go to that set, go to the Sets drop-down menu. At the very bottom there is a Go To Set function. Hover your mouse over that. The set menu will appear and you can choose which set you want to go to. Let's briefly recap what we went over. We talked about the elements that make up a set. We discussed editing set parameters. We talked about how to import a set and how to switch back and forth between different sets within a single previous file. In part two of this series, we're going to talk about the room builder functionality in detail, as well as inset force. And we're going to touch on global lighting, which affects holders of the professional and stereographic edition of Rainforest Previous.